After numerous long delays, The King's Man from Matthew Vaughn is finally out in theaters. Is it the B that subscribers have predicted? Well, let's find out. I love the first Kingsman movie and still do, but the second film, The Golden Circle, eh, not really. The sequel was a little much, and somewhere around robot dogs kidnapping Elton John and the way they brought back Colin Firth, I was like, this is kind of bad. I was looking forward to this prequel film, though, in the hopes that maybe it'd be a return to form for the series. And for the most part, it does fix a lot of the problems of the second movie. There's good qualities to it. It's great seeing Ray Fiennes headlining a big action movie like this. He brings the perfect level of class and sophistication that this character needs, and he easily carries that throughout. You've got Re Sci fans clearly having the time of his life playing Rasputin and going just as over the top as you'd want him to. The problem is, is the movie still isn't very good, but for completely different reasons than the second one. You ever see one of those movies where you isolate certain scenes, and you'd probably think this is, as a whole, a pretty good movie, but then when you watch it as a whole, it just doesn't come together. This is like a weird Franken movie that feels like several different ideas and scripts just crammed into one without much rhyme or reason. The whole first act is like I'm watching two completely different films. You've got one that's like a hard drama with a character like Ray Fine that seems straight out of something like The English Patient or when he was Lawrence of Arabia, mixed in a bit with his role in the 90s Avengers. <laughs> this movie is better than that. But then it'll cut back and forth between his drama with his son about how overprotective he is and doesn't want his son fighting in the war, to these James Bond slash Indiana Jones villains camping it up and saying words like fuckstick. It's a big tonal whiplash, but even when you get into the meat of the movie, it's like you have one movie about espionage, another that's like Wonder Woman, and then battle scenes like 1917, and they're fine on their own, but I couldn't tell what this movie wanted to be. The World War I battle scenes are impressive, and that sequence even ends rather shockingly, but with such a confused story, it's like it was all just happening, instead of being part of a cohesive story that I was following. Hell, I kept forgetting it was a Kingsman movie. Yeah, it's a prequel about the organization's founding, but you could take out every single reference to the Kingsman series, and it would be the exact same movie. The biggest problem with the movie, though, through all of its action involving parachuting, numerous sword fights, including guns on swords, and some pretty cinematography, some of which looks beautiful, other times they have POV sword cams, and the slow-mo can be a bit much. But even with all of those highly charged fight scenes, the movie is kinda boring. This is a movie that features Rasputin shoving a whole pie in his face and tonguing a scar on Ray Fine's leg, and then a plot to blackmail Woodrow Wilson with a sex film. It shouldn't be this uninteresting. That could be because there aren't nearly enough interesting characters here. Yeah, Ray Fiennes is great, and Rasputin steals a lot of scenes, but Rasputin isn't in the movie all that much. And all of the other characters are just kind of stuck and a bit wooden. The movie tries to hide its main villain by either shooting him from the back or putting masks on him. And then when the big reveal finally happens, I was like, who? Thank God there were flashbacks to show me who that was. An edge that the Golden Circle has over this is while it didn't succeed at the script level, it did have a whole host of interesting characters, especially Pedro Pascal, who I loved in that film. If you were disappointed in the Golden Circle, who knows? Maybe you'll find enough here that you'll enjoy? I don't know. Because it is different than that film, but this movie was still overall a letdown that just needed some kind of focus or better supporting characters. I don't think it's bad. There are impressive sequences on their own, but overall, I give it a C. The series had one great film for me, and that was the first one. And maybe it should have been just one of those series that should have been just one movie. Stay tuned, because we'll have our review coming up for The Matrix Resurrections, and our Christmas Evil Cinema Snob episode is currently going through a bit of a copyright issue, and I have no idea if it'll be able to be posted this month. But you can see it over on our Patreon at patreon.com slash thecinemasnob, and until then, we'll see you next time.